thank you for joining us today at Discovery Park of America. I'm Katie Jarvis from Discovery Park of America here in Union City, Tennessee, and I will be your host for this and other lessons with professors from the University of Tennessee at Martin. These lessons are for students in grades six through nine, but they will be of interest to anyone. Today, I'm excited to introduce Dr. Ann Gathers, an Associate Professor of Biological Sciences at UT Martin. She'll be giving us a lesson on the sun's ultraviolet light and the effects it has on our skin. So, Dr. Gathers, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you, Katie. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, so what are we gonna talk about first? Are we gonna do a little experiment? Are we gonna do a PowerPoint or? Uh, I'm gonna show you a few pictures and go over um, the sun's light, including ultraviolet light, and then show you the layout, or I'm calling it the mapping of the skin. And then we'll talk about um, what ultraviolet light does to the skin and to some other parts of the body. And then I have a little experiment here or a demonstration I'd like to show you and talk to you about another one that I have here too that you could do at home. Awesome. Well, thank you. Well, let's go. If you want to start screen sharing and we'll do a little power. I'll, I'll do that. I love the sun, especially during the summer months. I know right now I'm wearing my sweater, so my skin is covered, maybe my golden tan, and we might talk about that in a little bit, so. Yes, we might do that. I, I don't have much of a tan right now either. <laughs> Not that I have much of one ever. But, um, you, you know, the sun is, we think of this big ball of energy. It's bright and it's hot. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously essential for life on Earth. And when we think about the sun and giving out light, it's usually the light that we see, which is only a small part of all of the light that's emitted from the sun. All of the light that's emitted from the sun is called the electromagnetic spectrum, or sometimes it's called electromagnetic radiation. And within the electromagnetic spectrum, we have the visible light spectrum, and that's what we see. That's what our eyes can detect. So a lot of times that's all we think about. But the electromagnetic magnetic spectrum really entails a whole lot of other types of light. Some of those types of light have less energy than the light we see, the visible light spectrum, like infrared and radio waves, TV waves, all of those things that we take for granted, but we use all of the time. And then some of the other light energy on the other end of the spectrum, past the, the other end of the visible spectrum, has a lot more energy, like x-rays. We think about x-rays can be harmful, so we wear our lead cover-ups when we have to go get an x-ray. Um, but just between visible light in the spectrum and ultraviolet, I'm sorry, and um, x-rays, we have ultraviolet light. And we hear about ultraviolet light, we hear about it in the news, we read about it, but it's not something we can see it's outside of that visible spectrum. So a lot of times, as anything that we can't see, we just kind of forget about it or we don't pay as much of attention to it. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about it and focus on it and really what it does to the skin and to the eyes. And when we talk about ultraviolet light, it has shorter wavelengths, which means it has more energy than visible light. And we can break it down, actually, the ultraviolet part of the spectrum into UVA, UVB, and UVC. And UVA and UVB are probably the ones you've heard the most about. But we'll talk about those more in a minute. And so the skin, you may not know a lot about the skin, um, but the skin is actually two layers thick. And the epidermis that you see here is the outermost layer. It's the covering that we touch, that we put lotion on. Uh, the dermis, D for dermis, D for deep, is the deeper layer, the second layer. Now you can see here on this picture too that there's a third layer called the hypodermis or sometimes called subcutaneous fat because it is primarily fat. And it's not really part of the skin, but a lot of times we'll talk about it along with the skin and it does provide cushion and insulation for us. So it's right under the skin. But the epidermis and the dermis are the two main parts of the skin, the two primary layers of the skin. I remember studying the skin and we would always, this was like sixth grade or something, we'd always joke and say, your epidermis is showing. Oh, good for you. <laughs> so you knew it was the outer layer. Excellent. <laughs> the epidermis is showing and it's very important. 
it's our protective barrier against everything out there in the environment. So here's a picture for you of the epidermis and the dermis, as you can see again. And that outer layer, as you see here, is most affected by UVB, ultraviolet B radiation, whereas UVA it affects primarily the dermis. So depending on which type of UV light we're exposed to more, and usually from the sun we get both, but some of our sunscreens and other things will screen out one type or the other. You really want one that screens out both mm -hmm. because both have an effect, they just have differing effects on the skin. It looks like the UVA from that graph that you showed us at the very beginning, it was closer. I always thought like maybe the UVC might have been the more dangerous or the more, I don't know, I don't know, the harsher. It but, actually is. Okay. UVC is harsher. Okay. In reality, because it, it even has shorter wavelengths. So when I said the shorter the wavelength, the more power, the more punch, the more energy. So it's potentially more damaging. What's nice is, is that usually UVC coming from the sun doesn't make it past the ozone layer in the atmosphere. So it's not as much, it's not a threat to okay. us. Okay. That's not something we're regularly exposed to like UVA or UVB. Okay, interesting. So that's a good question. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And it's it's just interesting because UVA, I would think, would just hit just the epidermis and, and UVB would hit epidermis and dermis. But it's interesting that it's... That it it's is not. interesting, yes. And that it affects those. It's not uh, that it affects those differently. Yes, that's right. It's kind of counterintuitive there. So when we look at the skin, really that epidermis is four to five layers thick, depending on where we are in the body. In our hands, the the palms of our hands and the soles of our feet, we have really thick skin and so we have five layers of epidermis. Whereas maybe our bellies, our neck, our face, we have four layers of epidermis. But in general, we have four to five layers of epidermis. And the, the one I wanna focus on here is the bottom layer. Now layer, a word for layer is stratum. So these are all referred to as stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum. And that bottom layer, the deepest layer of the epidermis is called the stratum basale. Mm -hmm. So I like to say B for bottom or base, B for basale to help you remember that that's at the bottom. And you can see in the picture that I have here, I've pointed out a couple little cell types, or it's the same cell type, but a couple little examples of them here. And it's called the melanocyte. Site means cell. So anytime you see site at the end of a word, it means cell. Melano refers to melanin, which is a brown pigment that's produced in our skin. And so the place where the sun uh, protection comes from, because we all have some built-in sun protection, unless we're albinos, mm -hmm. we all have some built-in sun protection and it's based on these melanocytes that produce this pigment melanin. Mm -hmm. So I like to say that the melanin is actually our own built-in sunscreen. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> it is, and if you, if you think about melanin as a pigment, pigments are re related to color, right? So we think about it producing various, there it is as our protector, also as a parasol, not just our sunscreen, that's another way to think of it. But if you think it of, of it as our built-in sunscreen, um, you can see that it's related to all the different skin tones we see out there, different skin colors, the shades of our skin depending on how much melanin we have. Mm -hmm. So the lighter our skin, like me, I like to say I'm pretty much translucent mm -hmm. um, versus somebody who's darker, we would say maybe uh, olive or brown or black. Those individuals are gonna have more melanin production. Mm -hmm. Now what's interesting here is the number of melanocytes in their stratum basale, that bottom layer, is the same. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter your skin that. color. Okay. It's just it's the amount of melanin that they actually produce and then how it's distributed oh. through the ep epidermis that determines the shade of our skin. Okay. And it's advantageous to have more melanin, obviously, the more exposure you have to, this, to the sun because it is built-in sunscreen or it is a parasol mm -hmm. um, that shades the nuclei of the rest of the cells in the epidermis and protects them. Wow, I had no idea because I did think that it was more melanites. You know, the darker the skin, the more mel melanites or melanocytes. More melanocytes. melanocytes. Yes. Melanocytes. yes. Melanocytes. Melanocytes. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not true. We all have the same amount of melanocytes. Oh. Now I'll say that 
to say this. Um, I always tell my students, most of you actually have more melanocytes than I do, even if your skin tone is the same as mine or even lighter, if that's possible. But um, I'll say that because I'm older. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, as we age, we have cell death, mm -hmm. just in general. And so I probably have less melanocytes than you do. I'm sure I'm older than you are. So age does play a, a role in it, but not, uh, not skin color mm -hmm. as far as the number of melanocytes that we have. Very interesting. It is. So we've got this built in protection and some of us more than others, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, so our built in protection, the amount of melanin we produce and the way it's distributed through our epidermis is determined one based on our genetics and two based on our sun exposure. So, you know, you and I can go out and we said our tans have somewhat faded maybe from the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been swimming some this summer and been outdoors working in the yard. So I had a nice tan, uh -huh. and uh, but my tan has faded. The reason I ever had a tan, or I was darker than I am now, is I had more melanin produced because it was induced by the sunlight. Mm -hmm. My body said, alert, 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 mm -hmm. you're getting UV exposure, mm -hmm. therefore melanocytes crank out more melanin, put on more sun internal sunscreen uh -huh. to help protect you. The protection, wow. So I have a question for you, Dr. Gallagher. Um, it's speaking of tans, is there such thing as a healthy tan? The one you're born with. <laughs> so, so it's very important to put on the sunscreen when you're it outside. Is very important. It is very important. And even though the darker the skin color, the more melanin, therefore the more built-in sunscreen and more protection, it doesn't mean those individuals aren't at risk for damage by UV radiation. It just means they have more natural protection and are less at risk, but they should still wear sunscreen if they are, if they have a lot of exposure. And, and the other thing is, that's not the only place we find color. Think about somewhere else, and I've already alluded to it, the eyes, mm -hmm. where we have color variations, shade variations. What color are your eyes, Katie? They're green, kind of greenish hazel. They're green or ha greenish hazel, okay. And mine are blue, I know you can't see probably because of my glasses. Mine are blue and there are varying shades of blue. There's varying shades of green. And then my dad has very dark eyes. My brother has very dark eyes. So we have lots of variations in the shade of our eyes. And that part of our eyes that we see the color in is called the iris. Mm -hmm. And there's melanin there too. Oh. And so the lighter your eyes, the less melanin. And the darker your eyes, the more melanin in your iris. And it does the same thing for your eyes as it does for your skin. It protects your retina. Mm -hmm. that, that part of your eye that has all those different detectors or sensors that are gonna sense light and help you see well. So if you have lighter eyes, you need more protection for your eyes too to screen out the UV radiation. Mm -hmm. Very neat. Well, thank so, you. I know when we think about the skin and we think about UV radiation, we think about sunburn. Mm -hmm. That's usually what we're told, put on your sunscreen so you don't get sunburn. Mm -hmm. And of course that's very important, obviously, because one, it's painful, but two, it can be very damaging, mm -hmm. especially over time to your skin. And when we think about sunburn, it's usually UVB okay. that causes the sunburn, because remember, that's what hits the epidermis and that's the part that gets red here as you see it. UVB for burn. <laughs> UVB for burns. Good job. All right. And then it's UVA. Remember, though, you're still, if you don't have sunscreen on, you still got UVA digging deeper, if you will, or affecting the deeper tissues of the dermis. And in our dermis, we have fibers like collagen fibers, mm -hmm. and we have blood vessels. And so we can have damage to those fibers and those blood vessels over time mm -hmm. as well. And in addition to burns and the relationship of burns sometimes to skin cancer that we think of, which I'll talk about later, if you have too much sun exposure and you haven't been wearing your sun, external sunscreen, um, you can have damage to those deeper layers, as I said, the, in the dermis, the collagen, the fibers there, and those fibers will break down and that's a protein. And what happens over time is we get premature aging. Mm -hmm. So in addition to sunburns, which we think of and we think of that relationship to skin cancers, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, there's another 
part about UV radiation that's damaging to our skin. And it has to do with those deeper layers that, are t that I talked about, or those deeper tissues inside the dermis. Remember the dermis has fibers that we call collagen. And collagen's a protein. And what happens is UV radiation damages the collagen fibers. It breaks down the protein. And so over time, we end up with wrinkles, as you can see here in this picture. And that's how it affects our skin. So premature aging is something that comes with a lot of sin, skin, uh, sorry, sun exposure to our skin when we haven't used sunscreens regularly. And the other effect is on our eyes. Mm -hmm. Now, we talked about the iris having melanin and protecting our tissues, our more sensitive tissues in our eyes like the retina. But there's also another part of the eye called the lens. And the lens, what happens to it when there's a lot of UV radiation is we get clumping of proteins. And that clumping of proteins in the lens results in a clouding of the lens, and we know it as cataract. And we can get premature cataracts or cataracts earlier than normal if we have a lot of sun exposure, and we're not using protection for us. So UV radiation damages the skin and the eyes potentially. I think I've always heard of you know wearing the sunscreen that's super important to protect your skin but I never even thought about the eyes you know I think a lot of us just wear cute sunglasses or fashionable sunglasses just for the fashion of things but it actually does serve a purpose of protecting our eyes from from the UV lights which I did not realize. That's right and it is important for both sunscreens and for sunglasses. Now these are my sons and they're cheap and I don't know that they do have the enough protection like they should, but you should be able to tell if your sunglasses, when you when you buy a good pair of sunglasses, it should tell you that it screens out UVB and UVA. Mm -hmm. So that's something to look for there. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, we just usually wear them because we don't like the bright light. Right. It looks cool. Yeah. But really for our health. Yeah. And then I did say I would talk a bit about skin cancer, and mm. I just wanted to show you there are three main types of skin cancers, mm -hmm. basal, squamous, and melanoma. A lot of people may have heard of melanoma because it's the worst, it's very malignant, it spreads very quickly, typically. Um, basal, I like to say B for basal, B for best. If you're gonna have a skin cancer, this is the best type to have. It doesn't, it's not very aggressive, it doesn't spread very easily. Of course, you still need to get it treated. Mm -hmm. And then squamous is kind of right there in the middle. The squamous a lot of times appears as a raised bump or a sore mm -hmm. that won't heal. So if you notice a sore that won't heal on your skin or this kind of irritating raised bump, maybe sometimes with a pit in it, even if it isn't a sore, you should get that checked out. Then any kind of new spots on your skin, changes in the size or the shape um, and the color of a spot, or like I said, something that doesn't heal, you should get it checked out because skin cancers are, they're cancers. So mm -hmm. they, they are important as far as attending to for health. Now, the reason we get skin cancers is again because usually the UVB rays mm -hmm. are damaging the epidermis and they cause mutation changes, dangerous changes, harmful changes in the cells mm -hmm. in our epidermis. So let's take a look then. Let's see if we can see UV okay. rays. We said we can't see UV radiation, that it's not within our visible light spectrum, but there is a way to kind of indirectly see it and prove that it exists. Okay. So let's take a look at that right now. I'm okay. excited. I'm going I'm to stop sharing. Okay. And get this off the screen here so you can see what I've got here. So I have two different types of water. One is just regular tap water that we get out of the sink. And I filled this up to be a good scientist to about 200 milliliters. And I've got tonic water. This is just the brand locally that I could find. But tonic water has quinine in it. And you may have heard of quinine because quinine has been used to treat malaria. So this has a bit of quinine in it. And quinine, the flavor of this water, I haven't had any to drink, but I know that it's what it causes. It, it makes it bitter. Mm -hmm. And so this is bitter and it's bubbly just because it's carbonated. If it wasn't carbonated, it wouldn't matter. It would still have the quinine in it. So this would still work if it was flat. 
but this is tonic water. Now, tonic water, that quinine, contains a chemical called phosphorus. And phosphorus actually will help this water absorb the UV spectrum, absorb UV light. Regular water, tap water, doesn't have any of that in it or no significant amount of it, so it will not absorb UV light. And when this absorbs UV light, this tonic water, what happens is the electrons in here get excited. The molecules get excited, and in doing that, they emit light. So we'll be able to see, we should be able to see this little nice blue hue that comes from this, or light, nice blue light shimmer that comes from the tonic water. And when we put the UV light over this, we will not. Okay. So indirectly, we're going to see UV light that we can't normally see with our eyes. So I've got this is a UV, a UV light, and it has both UVA and UVB on it here. And it says, caution, do not expose eyes or skin to ultraviolet light. So what we've been talking about, this can be damaging. So you can do this at home, but don't shine it on your face or on your skin. Always keep it down towards the, the waters. Um, and I borrowed this from our chemistry department, thanks to them. And then I've got another UV wand here, and this UV wand actually uses UVC. And this is the type that's used to desanitize things. Or, or to, I'm sorry, to not desanitize, to sanitize yeah. things. So, um, but let's try UV, and this says long wave. So if you remember, the longer wave would be the UV. A. A, that's correct. And this says short wave, so that would be the UV B. B. So let's try the UV. I don't know if you can see that it's on. So I put it directly, and it's so close to this that it's already. I know it's already up. lighting up. It could is. You, I put it over the. Your, could you tilt your um, screen a little more for us so that we can see? Okay, there. Oh. Perfect. So there we have it, right over the normal water. Do you see any color? I don't see other anything. Other than what, what was there before, really? Nope. I really don't see anything. Now here's my wow. tonic water. I mean, that's a huge difference. And so it's absorbing that energy and emitting, there's some excitement occurring there and it's emitting that light. So you can see that blue light. And we can put on the UV B and you still see it maybe a little bit. Yeah, but it's not as, it's not as it's, strong or not as. No, it's blue. not. And then you'll see that there's still really nothing here from yeah. the regular water. Now I can do the UVC if you'd like for me. Yeah, let's see the UVC. To show you that. Do you really see anything here? Nope, not in the regular no, What about here? Yep, I see a little blue. So in this we see UVA most, correct? And then UV, maybe UVC more than UVB, but you can see in all of these, maybe there's proof now that UV radiation exists by seeing yes. this, right? Yes. So sometimes when we can see it, then we understand it better and we pay more attention to it. So I just wanted to show you that. And as I mentioned before, there's another thing that you can do at home. Just take a piece of construction paper, any color, really darker colors are easier to see this on, but any color, and you can experiment and try different colors to see what effects you might get with different colors. And you would take it out in the sun, Collect some leaves of different shapes. This is a great time of year for that. Mm -hmm. Collect maybe some flatter bark, some weeds, things like that to put on it and lay it on top in a pattern if you'd like and then cover it with cellophane or cling wrap mm -hmm. and hold the edges down with some rocks so it doesn't all blow away and leave it out in the sun in direct sunlight for a few hours. Mm -hmm. Now you can do it with plexiglass over it too just to make sure that the light can go through and you can hold the, the things down. So where you have your leaves and different oh, things, wow. what happens is the color, the original color is preserved, mm -hmm. right? It's like sunscreen there, it's fading. Mm -hmm. But everywhere else, the sun hit directly, the light hit directly on the paper. And so you've got a chemical change that occurred because of the UV light. Wow. So this is just another demonstration of how UV radiation is real mm -hmm. and it does cause chemical changes. Mm -hmm. and it's similar to the chemical changes that are caused in our DNA that cause mutations. Wow, well, thank you so much. Uh, back, to the, back to your UVA and UVB tools that you have. 
that reminds me of um, tannin beds a little bit. So yeah. can you talk to us a little bit about tannin beds and how it, they're probably not very good for us after seeing your demonstration? <laughs> yes. Now, now under the direction of a medical doctor, under the direction of a dermatologist, sometimes UV radiation is used to treat different skin conditions. Okay. But that's limit. They know the dosage. They know the wavelength, mm -hmm. and it has to be under their care. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, just going to a tanning bed to get a healthy tan, as we said, uh -huh. is not healthy because yeah. we are exposing ourselves to things like this that yeah. said, do not expose eyes or skin to ultraviolet. Okay. Right. That's what made me think of that when you read that to us. Yes. Oh my goodness. I have another question for you too, talking okay. about your the water demonstration. So I went to the beach this past summer and I did put on my sunscreen. I will, I will yeah. share that. <laughs> but um that water is salt water. And so okay. is that kind of similar to the tap water as to where because I felt like I got more sun being in the water than being outside of the water. Does that have anything to do with kind of similar things about the UV? penetrating through the the salt water or is there any relation so the salt water and the tap water are going to be more similar it's the okay. quinine you know that makes the difference okay. here and causes the absorption and then that readmittance of energy okay. of light um but yes uv rays at, in a sense it's almost like water is i don't want to say a magnifying glass but it helps sometimes to accentuate mm -hmm. to intensify mm -hmm. um what hit the, the rays that hit, hit your skin. Okay. So I know my son will say, if I'm gonna swim today, if most of me is gonna be underwater, I'll make him wear a swim shirt. That's another thing we can put on clothing, uh -huh. you know, to help block the sun, right. whatever it might be, a swim shirt or a hat, uh, a wide brimmed hat. Mm -hmm. But I tell my son, your legs are still underwater and I know you're gonna swim mm -hmm. and you may not get depending on how deep you are, you know, the rays have to go down into the water, but they will go down into the water. So depending on how long we're out there and such, mm -hmm. it's still important to consider that that skin and that's going to be exposed right. to the radiation and to it, sunlight. And that's what I always thought too. I would think, well, if I'm in the water, I mean, the water's going to protect me from the sun. So maybe I don't need sunscreen. Not at all. But, and you, you know that if you've been to the beach and you haven't worn sunscreen, right? right. Or to the pool and you haven't worn sunscreen. Right, right. So thank you so much. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us today before we wrap things up? Oh, well, UV is not all bad. I told you it can be treat, used to treat um, some skin issues under the the guidance of a of dermatologist or a physician mm -hmm. but a little bit of uv radiation uva and uvb is important especially uh, when it comes to our bone health mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and but i like to say 10 to 15 minutes of sunlight a day is what we really need mm -hmm. and that's because uv radiation causes vitamin d production i was about to ask that question what about the vitamin d i've always heard a little vitamin yeah. c will help you you know throughout the day <laughs> so stim stimulation of vitamin d production occurs by way of sunlight that's a natural way to get it okay so and it helps to regulate our sleep and our wake cycles mm -hmm. and you know that if we get off on that like jet lag Oh, or we live in a place maybe like Seattle that doesn't get a lot of sunlight sometimes, mm -hmm. then we can have problems with sleep and wake cycles. So some sunlight, some normal sunlight, uh, limited amounts are important for regulating sleep wake cycles too. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this with us today, Dr. Gathers. It's been wonderful learning about the sun's UV lights and the effects that it has on our skin. You're welcome. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to continuing our mission of inspiring children and adults to see beyond. For more educational resources, visit our website at discoveryparkofamerica.com slash education. Thanks for joining us.